welcome back part 2 of the lecture 1 we will now start our discussion on regression models so in the previous part we were discussing the, this problem we are given a different features of a new prototype car can you predict the mileage of a car on the miles per gallon of the car so we had this kind of data sets where we have different models, they are miles per gallon, different engineering features and from there we want to predict the miles per gallon for a new car whose design is available and we don't know what is the miles per gallon. So from the design we have the features but from the features we want to estimate or to predict the miles per gallon. So typically we start always start with some visualization methods so in this case I have taken weight of the car and the miles per gallon so naturally if the car is large then weight of the car will be high and if it is a two ton car three ton car four ton of I mean the, as the you know car weight increases size increases so naturally weight will also increase so miles per gallon drops so there is an inverse relationship between the weight and the miles per gallon so we if we have this kind of inverse relationship or you know whatever the, this kind of behavior we can fit a straight line and how we fit a straight line so straight line relationship will be miles per gallon is a function of beta naught plus beta 1 times the weight the x-axis plus some error now what is error now if you have uh, consider weight as say 2.1 then you can ha see there are two possible points so in this point this is there is no error this error is already sitting on the straight line but this point is actually a bit away from the straight line and this difference can be viewed as the error so now if we consider in addition to weight if we want to consider displacement in our model so now the data set has another axis so this is displacement this is weight and this is miles per gallon so effectively these three variables are sitting in a three-dimensional cube and when you're fitting this kind of model which is now anymore not regression line rather now it is a regression plane so in this way if you add another variable it will not be a three dimension it will be a four dimension problem I cannot draw a four dimension figure but you can see that if there is a p many variables then effectively with this kind of regression model what we are fitting is a p minus one dimensional hyperplane or this kind of a sort of a plane we are trying to fit so which is sort of a you know very rigid model compared to the typical data that we see generally in our experience the data is much more non-linear we have a non-linear behavior and these non-linear behave behaviors uh, are generally sometimes are very non-linear sometimes we can um, model with a simple linear or piecewise linear but uh, this is typically the starting point so we will starting from here and we will see how far can we go now we are going to introduce a generic structure that given a vector of inputs say x1 x2 xp these are the feature variables or the predictor variables we want to predict the output y so y equal to beta naught plus 
summation x j beta j plus epsilon so beta naught is typically known as intercept in machine learning literature it is known as bias often it is convenient to include a constant variable in one in x and which includes the beta naught in the vector of coefficient from beta 1 to beta p now we have the data y and x y and x together have the entire data so given the data we want to estimate beta the all the coefficient variables or the weight variable in the machine learning literature it is typically or sometimes known as weight variables now the question is how we decide the weights if i choose you know beta not equal to 35 and beta 1 is minus 5 then we have this line whereas if i just choose 39 and minus 6 i have this line so should i choose this line or should i choose this line so there are two possible choices beta not equal to 35 and beta 1 equal to minus 5 so this is one choice another choice is beta not equal to 39 and beta 1 is minus 6 so this is another choice these two choices gives me two line but there could be infinitely many choices for beta naught and beta 1 and so effectively I can fit infinitely many possible line but which line I should choose so for that we will resort to something called least square method and I'll talk about it what is least square method because least square method is the most popular method okay so we will resort to that but first we will talk about what is our standard regression model so this is our target variable or dependent variable we are taking it as a vector of length n then this is our feature matrix of n cross p so we have n ran random samples with p features coefficient of a length p, p cross 1 and there are epsilon n cross 1 so i can define the residual term we can write it as y minus x beta transpose y minus x beta so which can be written as a y my i minus x i transpose beta whole square as well so what is y i minus x i transpose beta which is basically epsilon i square so i am taking the errors and i am just squaring it up and then taking the sum so that is why it is called so these epsilons or the errors are also known as the residual so that is why it is called residual sum of squares or sometimes it's called error sum of squares so you take the errors, square them up, take the sum, so and you call it error sum of square or residual sum of square. So error and residual I'm using sort of interchangeably. Now for different values of beta naught and for different values of beta one, you have a straight line, and from that straight line you can compute the errors and square them up and take the sum so let me go back to the few slides back so for this is one choice beta not equal to 39 and beta 1 is minus 6 for this you got this line now for each point you got the errors you can compute this error the differences these differences this difference this difference each of these errors you square them up sum them and that is your error sum of squares or residual sum of square for this particular choice whatever the error sum of square you record that and in this way you can just plot this graph and you get this kind of uh, value so which choice you will choose I will choose where the error sum of square is minimum because I want to reduce the error I will like to get the best so somewhere here I will choose the you know where is where it wherever it is minimum 
in the valley, I will choose the beta. Its minimum always exists, uh, but may not be unique. But one can show that this minimum always exists. So how we get this minimum? So you differentiate this C dual sum of square or the error sum of square with respect to beta. So beta is a vector. So effectively, when I'm differentiating with respect to beta, it's a you know uh, vector differentiation and then equate to zero. So now what is error, error sum of square or residual sum of square of beta? y minus x beta transpose y minus x beta equal to zero. Then I, if you differentiate that, you can get this equation minus 2x transpose y minus x beta equal to zero. And you can set up this x transpose x beta equal to x transpose y. This is called normal equation. What is x transpose x? x transpose x is a p cross p matrix. Beta is a p cross 1 coefficient vector. And x transpose is a p cross n and y is a n cross 1. So you get a p cross 1 vector here. So normal equations have p unknowns. These are the unknowns. But this matrix x transpose x is completely known. It's a completely data driven thing. And x transpose y is also completely known. It's a data part. So there it has a p unknowns and p equations. So I got a system of equations to solve. If I solve this system of equation, I will get the solution for beta. So we will continue to discuss how can we solve the normal equation and fit the linear regression model in the next part of this lecture one. Thank you very much and please continue.